Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be going over how to replace your mechanical switches on a hot swappable mechanical keyboard. Now this sounds really basic and at first glance it could be. You're literally just pulling the switch out and popping another one in. That's it really. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff on the side that you might have questions about. And that's not really in any manual of any hot swappable keyboard, I would say. So here we have four different tips or tricks that come along with replacing mechanical switches on your keyboard. The first one, and I would say this is probably the most important one, is make sure that your keyboard is actually hot swappable. 99% of the time, this is a made up statistic. If a keyboard is hot swappable, it will say so on the box, on the product page, on the info page, whatever, you will know because this is a feature that we're there wanting to market to you and sell to you, really important. Make sure that it is hot swappable before you attempt to do any of these things. If it's not and you do try to plot your switches, you could damage your switches. You could pull the top housing straight out from the bottom housing. You could pull the switch out from its solder. So there's really a lot of things here that you don't really want to attempt or try unless you're 100% sure that it is hot swappable. So the second thing is you wanna look at your switches. Some switches have directionality to them or a certain way to take them out of the plate. Usually hot swappable keyboards have plate mounted switches. What this means is that the switches stay in their location by being pressed into the plate and then the legs go into your PCB. When a PCB isn't hot swappable and it's PCB mounted switches, the switches go on directly onto the PCB and are soldered on and that's how they maintain their stability. With the hot swap switches, it's usually plate mounted. So you wanna look for the directionality of your switches. Can you pull them from the left right side or do you need to pull them from the top down side? Some switches like the Gateron switches have those top and bottom latches that you need to close your switch puller on before pulling them out. I've noticed that the KL switches don't really have that directionality and you can pull on them from the left and right sides or the top and bottom sides. So make sure you know that so you don't ruin some of your switches. I have potentially, possibly ruined a Gateron red switch because I didn't know. If something feels really, really, really tight and it's not giving at all to being pulled out, then chances are you might have a special switch that needs to be pulled out a special way. Number three is the notion of a five pin versus a three pin switch. What does this mean? So when you, you're looking at a switch by itself, you look at the bottom side, how many sticks are popping out. Usually you have the middle bump, you have the two metal pins that you put into your PCB, and then on the five pin switches, you have the two plastic legs on each side, and that's why it's called a five pin switch. On the three pin switch, it only has the middle bump and the two metal pins. It doesn't have the plastic legs on the side. Some hot swap PCBs only have three pins and some have five pins. So that's what it means when you hear that question being tossed around. So why would you want one over the other? It really doesn't matter. If you have a three pin hot swap board and a five pin switch, you can take either cuticle clippers, nail clippers, flesh cutters, whatever, and just clip those two plastic legs on the side off and then you can use those switches with your three pin PCB. But if you look at different hot swappable keyboards and you notice this difference, that's what that means. You don't really have to be concerned about the compatibility of switches when it comes to hot swappable boards, unless you really, really do not want to clip those legs off, then you would be a little bit limited in your choices of switches and of boards. The fourth thing is what does it feel like when you press the switch into the board? What do you want that to feel like? You want that to be a soft press into the board and you wanna make sure the pins are aligned with the holes. That if 
something feels off, it probably is off and it may cause one of your metal pins to be bent. Don't worry though, because this is pretty easy to fix. I've done this many times before. To fix it, you want to get either tweezers or a really small pair of pliers. And you just want to straighten out those pins carefully, not to accidentally break it. And you don't want to pull it apart from the switch either. So be really careful there and then just try again. Make sure they're aligned and then push down onto the plate with even pressure very slowly until you hear a soft click. If you're just pressing them in and pounding them in the board, you're probably more likely to get some of these bent pins. So take it your time. Number five, I know I said there were four, but I meant five, is you wanna test all your switches directly after putting them all on. And you can use a online keyboard tester, such as the link that I'll put down below, or you can download a program that I like called Switch Hitter. And it pretty much allows you to see if your switches are registering with your PC or not. If it's not, you gotta take them out and then see if it does have a bent pin because usually that's what's causing it not to register. If there's nothing wrong with the pins and the computer isn't registering it still, it may be a problem with that hot swap socket and that is a more serious problem that we can talk about in the distant future because that involves desoldering your hot swap sockets and putting on new ones. It's a little bit more problematic. So we just hope that it's one of your metal pins being bent and that's a pretty quick fix. So anyways, how do you replace hot swap switches on your keyboard? You get a switch puller and if your keyboard is hot swap, it usually comes with a switch puller. It's a metal piece of equipment, usually bent or clip shaped with tiny prongs at the end and you can clip your switches and then pull them out. I like to do a little wiggle before pulling them out just to make sure that I'm not pulling on them too hard, but that's it. You just pull them out and to put new ones back in, you align the legs and then push down really slowly. It's a really fast process for information on what to do after you take out your switches, you can lube them. I'll link you to a video on lubing mechanical switches right here. And then I'll, and then you can check out some of our mechanical keyboard reviews right here and subscribe here if you want to. I'll see you in the next one.